Normally when you look at an inventory, you can tell pretty quickly which weapon or couple of weapons is the main focus of the inventory. So I want to see if you guys can look at the inventory I have set up here and tell me what two weapons are the main weapons that I'm trying to make use of. Now if you want to take a second, go ahead and pause. But if you said the scimitar and power stand straight sword, you would be correct. Now, there are some advanced concepts in this simple inventory that make it pretty interesting, and so I want to go over those with you today. So, the thing is, is that, as I have stated in a previous episode, the interesting thing about putting your main weapon in your offhand is that it does a couple things for you. So, first things first is if you are buffing it, you are able to swap your main hand weapon or use the Ash of War in your main hand weapon. Let me swap to the one that's not parry. You can use what is in your main hand and either keep that buff or just keep it close so you don't have to swap back to it real quick, meaning that it is easier to do and it is also saving you time. But what this also allows you to do is if your main hand weapon is something that you are only using sometimes, intermittently, whatever the case might be, then it means that you can keep swapping back to it from the same distance. So, I like having a Guardian Sword Spear on this build because I like being able to pull it out very quickly and go for a high damage running R1. That is something I've personally always liked doing. And it is worth mentioning that, similar to what I said in a previous episode, that when it comes to your inventory, every last ounce of it is based on personal preference. But, in your per personal preferences, you can have things that are going to be a little bit more complicated than your average inventory. So, with that being said, I actually have three things that are meant to be the main hand weapon. So first thing is, is the Raptor's Talons. So the Raptor's Talons are a very powerful invasion weapon due to having a couple true hit combos with its R2. And this allows me to have very close by, say I'm on my scimitar, I'm able to pull out the Endure, or I'm able to pull out any of these things. I can pull out a good running attack. I can pull out something that potentially threatens to one shot and I have a high hyper armor get off me tool. Up I have carry and retaliation, and all over the way at the top I have my great bow. Now the reason that we have three rows of this is because that there were three things that I wanted to try out in the main hand, and I wanted to make sure that just about every single swap vertically was consistent with the last. So for the main hand, we are mostly looking at our vertical inventory, but we are also doing some things sideways. Essentially, if the time calls for a different thing to be in the main hand, then we are able to do so. So actually, I have a swap here to the left, which is going to be our long range option right there, right? And then I also wanted one for the Qatar, since this is also a very powerful weapon. And if I had it on my side, I could swap to it very quickly. But other than the great epes up here at the top, which are not optimal, the stitcher is more optimal, but I like how this looks more, just for clarity's sake, then I can swap to that. So I can go up here and have a very long uh, running attack and also a couple different Ashes of War, right? But the thing is, and this is where the second advanced concept comes in for today. Putting your main weapon, or say the offhand weapon of a power stance moveset, is actually technically not optimal in this specific slot right here. It may surprise you, but actually the best place to put it is right here. And the reason why is quite interesting. So when you look at your inventory, this is the slot that is the furthest away, so you might be wondering what is the point of putting your weapon all the way over here? Well, the thing is is that when you are using your bumpers, you are cycling through the different hands you have. And this is the only one that with a single bumper press can take you from your first right hand slot to any of your left hand slots. So what this means is that you can say 
you have a power stance setup like the power stanced long swords once again not optimal they're pretty good but not the best thing i could go for i just like how they look with my armor uh but anyway so i'm on qatar and guess what this is the least amount of inputs needed to get from this current setup of scimitar and the qatar to the long swords and there you go you're on a completely different setup now now, whichever setups you want to incorporate into your build is up to your personal preference. It could be, say, a halberd and an offhand dagger. It could be a curved greatsword with an offhand f-stock. It could just be a weapon to be two-handed and a shield to put on your back, say, like the spiral horn shield, which increases your resistance. So the thing is, is that while this inventory is way smaller than a lot of YouTubers you might see out there because it doesn't have a scroll wheel. Once again, that is a personal preference of mine. I like being able to see all of my options without a scroll wheel. It's just something about me personally that I like being able to see everything I have at one time. This makes it extremely easy because I've essentially created a muscle memory between all three of the things that should be in my main hand. They will all have as one tick up, a running R1 from a halberd. Most of them will have a running R2 from a heavy thrusting sword for an even longer range running attack. And then also, if I were, say, at the Raptor's Talon, one trigger press up is going to be the Stormhawk Axe, right? And then a trigger press down is always going to be a great bow right and the same thing goes for the parry shield one press down is always going to be the parry shield and then if i choose to change setup i certainly can or i can go to power stancing and there you go now for everything here this is mostly to keep things out of the way and to fill slots to make sure that i am able to pull off this arrangement so say things like my macera cord things like my shields and things like my frenzy seal these are going to be in placements that i don't plan on swapping to but obviously you're going to be using these essentially these two slots right here are going to be the best for things you do not plan on swapping but just keep in your pocket so what i like to do is i like to have my misera cord right here and my frenzy seal right here so the reason is is that Essentially, these are going to be things that you can swap to very quickly with, say, a bumper press, or this one right here is the hardest to get to. These, these two slots here are the most difficult to get to in terms of the amount of button presses they take. So putting something you plan on never taking out of your inventory is best put in either right hand three or left hand two. And I personally prefer left hand two. I don't like having three swaps in a single hand. So the thing is, is that say I'm, I'm playing with the power stand straight swords, I can say I get a parry, then I can just soft swap to the Macera cord. It is not a heavy weapon, and I have scaled my amount of endurance to being able to account for that. Now, the thing is, is that if I wanted to, say I wanted to pull out the hand ballista, then I could pull it out like so and use it for whatever I want to. Because even though I hardly plan on swapping the Macera cord from anything else, I do have this swap as an option if I chose to. So with that being said, I know that this is not as long of an episode, but generally speaking when it comes to advanced concepts for your inventory, mostly they're going to be things that are related to how can you minimize the amount of inputs needed to do everything, right? So the way that I have it set up, while it can be simplistic to a fault, since I don't have multiple rows of a whole bunch of things, this is very accomplishable for somebody who has legitimately farmed their stuff. If you are somebody that has gone into New Game Plus, it is almost certain that you have more than the base two Stormhawk Axes, right? You can farm these. If you don't have say two great epes since you only get one of these per playthrough one of these can be an epe and one can be a stitcher 
these are farmable. This can be any shield. The fact that it is a parry that is on it is all that's important. I just chose the buckler because it is small and weighs little. Uh, you can farm more scimitars. Just about everything here can be replaced with something farmable or can be replaced with something better that ends up working out better for the build anyway. So with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed. This episode is not going to be near as long as episode two, but it is hopefully going to be just as effective for your understanding of your own inventory. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.